the end is at hand and we are going to we're going to face the antichrist we're going to face these uh, fema camps the mark of the beast and a lot of people think we're doom and gloom that we are you know pessimistic and I'll, actually but we're really not we're looking forward to the end how many of you are looking forward to the end coming now many people are so scared and so frightened that whenever you talk about these uh, ho horrible realities what they're putting in the food and the water and, and spraying in the air and, and things, it, it's really, it really takes them back. It really makes them tremble. And uh, we're told in the scriptures not to be afraid of what man can do to us and what this world is going to try to do to us. So we're bringing good news, guys. Listen, if you're invested in this world, I'm, I'm gonna hate to break the news to you, but it's going to be destroyed. It's gonna be regenerated. Everything in this world, everything that man is doing for himself, all the awards, the recognition, the PhDs, the scholar, scholarship work, all of that stuff is going to be burned up. Everything man has built and created and invented outside of glorifying the Almighty is going to be burned up. Every good deed even, every work, every effort, every thought is going to be burned up at the judgment if we don't found it in Christ. Everything that's outside of the Son of God, everything we do inside Christ will last forever. All of our friendships, all of our ideas, I think our creativity, even perhaps our inventions that we, we come up with, our writings, our artwork. I think if we give it to God, I think if we give everything to the Almighty God, that's truly a spiritual element that it'll carry on, it'll carry forward into the next life. We have hope. We have a lot of hope in Christ. In fact, he is the only hope we have. There is no hope outside of him. They'll tell you that Andromeda galaxy is gonna crash with our galaxy in the future, that our sun is gonna swell up and burn the oceans and evaporate all the water on the earth. The end, the demise and the inevitability of an end is written in the galaxy, written in the stars. We can see a clock that is ticking down in nature. The second law of thermodynamics, everything's wearing down. The sun is not going to last forever, they say. Even scientists who think it's way out there, 93 million miles, they'll tell you one day it's going to run out of fuel. Brothers and sisters, one day we're going to die. One day we're gonna lay out, we're gonna breathe our last breath and no matter what we do in this world, we're gonna have to give an account to God Almighty and stand before him. And then we're gonna be judged on whether we're forgiven of our sins or not based on what we do with that gospel message, what we do with that information that was given to us. Just like information is written on your DNA, that your DNA is programmed with information telling it how to build your body, give your eye color, give your hair color, what size you're going to be. Did the instructions for your physical body are written on every cell? The information, it's communicated. Why am I saying this? Because God has further communicated a way for us to understand the existence of the universe. Why we're here, where we're going, what's going to happen after we die, where did we come from? That's all been written. Do you understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? That the information has been given to us. Just like inside every cell of your body, information has been given so that it can replicate and perform its function. The, it has been written down for us to learn how we can escape the coming judgment, how we can live forever, how we can live forever. It's been written down and given to mankind in a book. And we have the knowledge, we have the information. The question is, do you believe? Are you able to hear? Are your eyes opened? Do you understand? We, we, many people are, are different levels of understanding and different viewpoints of the end of the age, uh, the end of time. It's been going on a long time. People have been saying that forever and ever that the end is at hand, I understand that. But there are certain components, certain facts, certain evidences that show that we are indeed a unique generation, a very special, special people. And the earth is flooded and populated and overflowing with people. In the last 150 years, we've gone from 1 billion people, 
1 billion people to almost 7 billion, over 7 billion. And it has exploded in the last 100 years population on the planet for a very good reason because we're heading towards the end. We're heading towards the end of the age. We're heading towards the final ripeness. It says the, the earth is ripe. The Bible says the earth and the harvest have come to completion. It is finally filling that moment where it is time to send the reapers. It's time to send the reapers. And the, the end of the age is at hand. So we're just, you know, we're apocalyptic group here. We are accused of being fear mongers. And I pray that you understand that these things are good components if done properly and used properly, that a good healthy dose of fear is part of the gospel message. In fact, what is written down for us is a warning and a promise. We've got a warning and a promise in the scriptures. We've got a promise of eternal life if, and then after the if is the warning. If we follow the Son of God and listen to the Son of God, we can escape what's coming. And we're told what's coming. We're told that there's a fiery judgment coming upon the earth and that God is going to destroy everyone who rejects his, his way, everyone who rejects his kingdom, everyone who rejects his Son. He's put his Son down into the world and says, if they follow my Son, they'll be saved. If they listen to my Son, they'll be saved. If they honor him as they honor me, they will be saved. And we will receive his spirit. And we we're going to talk about that a little bit later. I got something I want to show you, though, in these videos, guys. There's a couple of more videos I want to show you. Um, listen, we don't argue about this stuff. So please, if, if you hear something on the channel that, you know, shocks you, um, please understand we're not trying to be uh, argumentative about it. The government is hiding something. The government is up to something. How many of you believe? Give me a seven if you believe that, that some conspiracies are true. That the word conspiracy is not a bad cuss word. It's not, it's not a profane thing. There are le legitimate conspiracies in the world. In fact, if you look up the Bible, the word conspiracy is used all the time. How many of you know that Lucifer conspired with other angels to try to overtake the, ki the kingdom of heaven? That's what we see in Revelation chapter 12. Michael stands up and there's a war that takes place and the devil and his angels try to fight against Michael and his angels and they don't prevail. Go read it. Don't tell me there's not real legitimate conspiracies in the world. Don't tell me that people aren't planning things secretly behind our backs. Don't tell me there isn't a diabolical plan to kill, destroy, and murder people. Don't tell me that because it is written down. It is written. One of the reasons we believe these things that we're talking about on this channel is because we find it in the scriptures. One of the reasons we believe there's a solid dome above us is because it's written in the scriptures. I don't get into the, I don't debate with people about flat earth, round earth. I don't care. I don't care if it's round, flat, square. It doesn't matter to me. But one thing I do know is that we can find in the scriptures, there is a solid dome above us. And I don't believe we've ever escaped this planet and gone to the moon. I just don't believe that. But we don't argue about it. One th another thing I believe is that they're, they're putting stuff in the food. They're putting stuff in the water. They're spraying the sky. They're doing it because, as Bill Gates and Ted Turner will tell you publicly, that there are too many people on the planet. There's too many people on the planet. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said that 50% of the earth is going to be wiped out in a relatively quick amount of time. There'll be two in the field, one will be taken, one will remain. That, that passage and that, that little parable there is not the rapture, my friends. It's not. It is talking about basically in a very short amount of time, half the population will be off the planet, gone, reaped. And we see that in the four apocalyptic horsemen that are coming down. You can read it in Revelation chapter 6. You see by the time you get to the fourth horseman, 25% of the earth is dead. And then by the time you get to the sixth trumpet, another 33% of the earth is dead. You add those figures together, it's approximately, approximately 50% of the earth dead. We're talking about dying here. We're talking about being reaped here. We're, in a, we're at the generation, we're at the time right now, we're at the edge, we're at the brink, where we got to start considering, you know, are we ready to face, are we ready to face plagues are we ready to face a plague outbreak 
Are we ready to face that? Brothers and sisters, about 20, I, I think the, the numbers, I'm, I might be wrong about this, but the first world war, I mean like 20, 20 million people died. The second world war, they say 50, 60 million people died. But we don't hear the other numbers about other catastrophes that have taken place. Did you know that about 50 to 60 or more million people died from the flu epi epidemic, a flu? The flu went around the world and killed about 50, 60 million people just from a virus. We don't hear about that. We hear about the wars more than anything, but, but overnight a, a flu, a virus could sweep this globe and kill millions, if not billions of people. And the Bible says there's coming a time when billions of people on the planet will die. Now, I know that this is scary. and I know a lot of people turn this off. I know a lot of people don't want to hear about this, but we're strengthening you. How many of you are facing your fears and growing stronger in Christ? How many of you are learning to put on the courage that you're going to need in this last generation? Type of seven. And if you're, you're learning, you're, maybe you're a mother with a new baby. Maybe you're single. Maybe you have, you have worries and concerns and anxieties. Brothers and sisters, I have to crucify those things too. I'm concerned myself. I don't have enough food to feed my family, my grandchildren. I'm already preparing my mind and my heart and my soul for what could inevitably take place for starvation for plague outbreaks, for viruses and sickness. I'm already preparing my heart through meditation, through praying, through singing, through, through understanding that there's nothing I can do about it. We gotta prepare each other. We gotta strengthen each other. We're not here to make money on this fear. I mean, a fear monger, my friends, is, is doing it for ulterior motives. A fear monger, honestly, is taking fear for personal gain. We're not doing that here on this channel. We're not trying to scare you so I can sell a book or something. If I am using fear, it's just like Jesus used it. And that's so that you'll drop to your knees and repent from your sins and call upon God to save you. And that you'll live a life of fear and trembling in the, in the, in the tone that will guide you down a path of obedience and holiness and righteousness. That you'll come off your addictions, your, your pornography. You'll turn away from your hatred, you're arguing, you're quarreling with one another. You'll put down all that anger, envy, and unforgiveness that you'll get your life right. And the only way to get your life right, my, my friends, is to just simply listen to what Jesus says. Trust that he's the son of God. He's God in flesh. The son of God came from eternity into the world through a virgin birth. He, he did miracles that no one else did. Don't believe the stuff that you're hearing on the internet about Horace and all these other things. That's all internet hype and propaganda. There's no proof. If you go to the sources, if you go to the original sources on all this nonsense, there's no evidence on the hieroglyphs. There's no evidence on the stones. There's no pottery. They're making it up. It's a complete and total fabrication. There's only been one person who was born of a virgin who died and rose from the grave. All the other stuff is hype and make-believe, it's fabricated, it's fictitious, it's a lie. Jesus is the only one who rose from the grave and proved it. 500 eyewitnesses, there's a book that's been written down that has carried that message through the centuries. People have tried to destroy that book, but they themselves have been destroyed. And governments have tried to destroy the book, but they themselves have been destroyed. God's word has remained for this final hour. You ask yourself, you may ask yourself, why has, why, why did they only have one letter or two letters or a part of the Bible in the, old, in the old days? And why were we given the full Bible in the last 400 years? Again, I will tell you that up, up, up to about 400 years ago, there was only 500 million people on the planet. Up, up until the time we got the King James Bible, my friends, there wasn't very many people on the planet. But since then, we have exploded in population. The final generations are finally working themselves out. We're finally at the end of the time where God has even delivered to us an amazing amount of grace. See, it says that they're not going to find his word. It says they're going to search, but they won't find it. There's a prophecy that they're going to try to find his word in Amos chapter 8 that they're going to try to find the word of God and they won't be able to find it. There's a huge attack on the English version, the original English version of our Bible. And now the scholars are producing many, many Bibles out there to confuse people. Many, many, many variations to mislead people and, and uh, to hurt people's understanding. That's the point. The, the manuscripts they're using are not reliable. They're not trustworthy. And the scholars are flooding the universities and seminaries. And the churches are filled with preachers and pastors who are teaching 
from these corrupt Bibles. And brothers and sisters, I'm not saying you're going to go to hell if you're reading these other books. I'm saying the words have been manipulated and you're not getting the full measure. I want the full measure. I want it all. We're at a time right now where the word of God is under attack. The truth is under attack. It's going to be very difficult to know who to believe, what to believe. There's going to be signs and wonders and miracles that are taking place to captivate and the, the innocent and the naive and the willfully ignorant, brothers and sisters. You have to understand there's a whole world filled with people who rebel against God. An atheistic uh, attitude of, of self-will, self-satisfaction, materialism, and that they reject God. The whole world is rejecting God and very few people are listening to these warnings. Very few people are listening. Very few people are taking it serious. Very few people will be saved. It's the truth. It's the way it is. Uh, we're just told to make sure that we are one of the elect. How are you, how are you to make sure that you're one of the elect? Quite simply, with a little bit of fear that's good to guide you, you search out the truth and you listen and you pray and you fast and you repent from your sins. Start by crying out to God and saying, God, I believe that you sent your son into the world and ask God to reveal the true Jesus to you. For there are many Jesuses in the world. There are many faults counterfeit messiahs and Christs, many people claiming to be the son of God. There will be false miracles also. Many people will be misleading. Millions of people will be misled by signs and wonders and miracles. So the hope that we have is to truly turn from our sins. Number one, you've got to give up your wicked ways. You've got to give up your lust. You've got to give up your addictions. Listen to me, my friends, that's going to, that's going to pull you back. That's going to pull you into deception because there's a lot of teachers out there that will tell you that it's okay to live a life of sinful uh, be, do, deeds and that all you got to do is say that you believe in Jesus and that somehow you'll still be saved, even though you haven't given God your whole heart. You've got to give God your whole heart. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying I'm perfect yet. I'm saying I'm crying out to God and I'm turning from my sins and I'm, I'm growing in grace. We've got to grow in grace. We've got to receive the spirit of God. We've got to grow in his knowledge. We've got to trust him. We've got to, we've got to really learn who to, who to hang out with, who to listen to, who to have fellowship with. And what Bible to read from, in my opinion, is very important to get the strength of the message. I'm not saying you're going to go to hell if you read the other versions. I'm just saying they're leaving stuff out. They're leaving stuff out. They're leaving important verses out, important words. And I don't want to, I don't want to be weak in my faith. Now is not the time to, to be weak. We got to be strong. We got to be supernaturally uh, equipped by God and we need each other. We need to find a fellowship and we need each other and we need to pray for each other and we need to love each other the best that we can. And if we make mistakes along the way, brothers and sisters, we deal with it quickly. We deal with it quickly. We forgive each other very fast and we say we're sorry, lightning speed. We don't wait around. If we find out that we're being envious, we find out that we had harbor some grudge. If we did something mean or said something rude, we're quick brothers and sisters. We make mistakes. We make mistakes along the way but we can't hide our sins. We can't pretend that they don't exist. We can't sweep them under the rug. We can't make excuses for them. We can't embrace them, my friends. We've got to turn our back on them. We've got to reject them. And even though it's difficult, we cry out to God for grace. We say, Lord, I cannot do this thing on my own. I need you to give me the power. Save me because we're saved by him. We're saved through him. But we got to call upon the true Jesus and we got to be willing to do what he says. You got to give him your heart. You can't hold on to this world and don't be afraid of what man can do to you. Cry out to God to give you courage, to give you hope and give you strength. And then hang out with people because we have this fellowship by the grace of God every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, guys. And, and it literally is by the grace of God. My channel has been closed down twice. It's been, I've been suspended several times. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're hanging on by the, by the donations of, of, of you guys uh, helping me pay the bills so I can keep this thing going. So, by the way, thank you for your prayers and your support uh, helping me. Uh, any, any, any donation that you give to this ministry is to keep it going and to, and to buy food and pay my light bill and things like that. So we, we need each other is what I'm trying to say. I need you. You need me. We need each other. And I'm, we, I just pray that you keep coming back to this kind of fellowship while it's available because there's coming a time when it's going to be cut off 
And there's coming a time when you're not going to hear. Download the videos and save them on your computer. That's what I would do. If you find a message like this, when you find a video that you like, download it and keep it on your computer in case the website, in case the channel's gone. You, the, we, we give all of our videos for free at, at, our, at our website. Download them. Download them. And brothers and sisters, I'm just saying, we need each other. The end is at hand. The gospel message is the most powerful, potent truth there is in the world. The Holy Bible, there's no book like it. There's plenty of evidence, eyewitnesses. Science points to God. The universe was created in such a manner that we know there was somebody loving and personal behind it. It is the fingerprint of the Almighty. And every, inside everyone's hearts, you know that there's a creator and you're going to stand before him one day. If you have that revelation in your mind, it's grace. God's opening your eyes. God's teaching you little by little. He's drawing you. He's trying to draw you into his son. But you're going to have to go willingly. You're going to have to start to turn away from this world. Trust him and let go. There's a crucifixion that comes in every man's heart. We've got to crucify our own will and our own desires. We've got to let go. Many of us are having very difficult times letting go of things and trusting God. And, and I understand that. I, have, I get that way sometimes. But we got to press forward anyway. And we got to know. And we got to be reminded. And that's why ministries and channels like this and videos like this are so important to hear over again and to come back to because we forget so easily and so quickly. We forget. It doesn't take long to forget these things. And so it's important to be reminded. And that's what we're doing in these fellowships. We're reminding you, come back to the awareness, come back to the urgency. We need to be living in a spirit of urgency, not anxiety, but urgency. There's a difference. There's a difference between being anxious about what man can do to you and being urgent about paying attention and living holy and obedient. That should be a priority. Are you obedient and living holy and following the Son of God? That's an urgency every day. No slacking, no laziness, no lukewarmness. Paying attention and prioritizing our lives to the obedience of Christ is an urgent way to live your life. It, it shows that you truly are following and believing in, in the God and he can see that in you. He can tell the difference between a lukewarm Christian, by the way, who will be spewed out of his mouth Lukewarm Christians will not be saved. You won't be. And knowing about Jesus is not going to save you. You have to be born in an obedient spirit. And I'm not saying I'm perfect yet, but we've got to be following the Son of God. He knows the difference between someone who is lukewarm and someone who is following him. And you've got to look in the mirror and judge yourself. Judge yourself. And if you have any questions or doubts or fears or you're not sure, you're lacking anything. He is the place to go. He is the one to cry out to. He's the one. And read that scripture. Read those Bibles. Read that scripture. Read the King James Version, in my opinion, it's the best one. Keep tuning into our channels. Find some friends that believe what you believe, even if it's one person through our group here that you can text once in a while. Men with men, women with women, be careful of falling into fornication, ladies and brothers. Please be careful. Now is not the time to slip backwards. Now is the time to repent. Now's the time to come clean. Now's the time to purge your life from all the spots and stains, my friends. We're running out of time. And at any moment, the end can come for you and your life. And this is a good fear. This is not fear mongering. This is fearful wisdom. Know the difference. For the only thing that I'm going to profit from this fear, the only thing that I will personally gain from this is that you might be saved. That's it. And what a glorious reward that will be.